So I have really only come to this area fairly recently, this area of research, and I come from a health background. Um, so I come from a, from a particular perspective. So I see young people, but I also do research on this, on this topic. And I, coming from a public health perspective, we do things in certain ways, but I've had also the great pleasure of being able to work with other disciplines more recently. So outside of health, social science, which has really enabled me to have a better understanding of some of the things that, that you know, how young people feel and how we might be able to capture that in the data that we collect. So I'm going to talk a little bit about this issue and how it affects um, the surveys and the research and the data that everyone refers to. So from a, a public health perspective, we're very reductionist. We try to put people into boxes because we need to get a large enough sample to do our analyses. So we like to put them in one group or another group. So when we've looked at these different attributes of young people in, in studies in Australia and elsewhere. We've asked about sexual attraction in particular of young people. So are they attracted to the opposite sex only, the same sex only, both sexes unsure or not attracted at all? And then we might actually sort of group some of those together. When we ask about sexuality identity, which is different to sexual attraction, but not always specifically separated out in studies, we ask whether they're heterosexual, gay, lesbian or bisexual. So with young people, we tend not to ask those questions. We do sometimes, but not that often. We mainly ask about sexual attraction. With gender identity, we're even further behind and very few surveys ask anything more than male, female, but we're just starting to ask other. <laughs> and then, then we get a, a a box that opens up and gives a few alternatives and even a spot to write something in. But um, we can't expose them to the other un if they have already ticked the male or the female first. <laughs> so this is all different to intersex status, which is something quite different again. And, um, and I, I won't go into it because it's just complicated and I don't have the answers to it, but it is something really important that we should be collecting data on. So, since I've been working with social scientists, they're less reductionist, and that has been very interesting for me, but still somewhat confusing. So um, some of the things that have confused me is, you know, these terms, and I'm sure that they confuse the general population, cisgender, gender diversity, transgender, transsexual, trans, asterisk, trans, F to M, or M to F, non-binary, queer, sister girls, brother, boys. So, I mean, there's just these are a whole lot of terms, but these are some of the terms that are used in the literature. But they're not necessarily the terms that young people use. I also come across heteronormative a lot, and I didn't know what that meant before I started working with my colleagues. Um, and in particular, I'd like to acknowledge um, Professor Kerry Robinson and Kristen Davies, who are social science researchers and have been in this space for a long time, and they've taught me heaps. So heteronormative is actually like, it's like the term political correctness. It's sort of been attacked and grabbed when actually it's just meant to be completely neutral and not have any value attached to it. It just describes an environment that uh, reflects um, the way that our heterosexual community has always lived. And I mean, in fact, heterosexual wasn't even a word that existed until the, cent until the 20th century. So, I mean, and then homophobia and transphobia, another, another area that I'm not going to go into right now, but these are other terms. So what do young people say themselves? So my colleagues conducted the Growing Up Queer study, which was over a thousand young people who responded to an online survey. And they were asked, again, they had categories, but they did have this open box where they could talk about other things. And so you can see that there are lots of other terms that young people you know, call themselves, such as human, and I prefer not to label myself. So these are interesting too. Um, and so I'll just move on to, so how many, I'll move, I'll move on to some of the data now because I think it's still value, of value for us to understand how many of these young people exist. And this is the reductionist approach that I'm using because that's all we've got really. So the Australian Health and Relationship Survey was done of a general representative sample of Australian 
adults from 16 up to 70 or so. And 3 to 4% identify in the group lesbian, gay, bisexual or plus. Um, so more common in urban and higher SES professions. And so it's a small percentage, similar to the, the uh, proportion in the population who identifies Indigenous. So, but however, when we look at behaviour and attraction, 9% um, of males and 19% of females have either attraction and or experience with same sex. Um, so same sex attraction or sexual experience with the same sex partner. And most, I should just say, that most of those who identified as lesbian or gay have had opposite sex sexual experience. And that's very important for doctors who don't seem to understand that. <laughs> so, um, and you know, two thirds of males with same sex attraction and experience identify as, as gay or bisexual, but only one fifth of females identify as lesbian or bisexual. So there's quite important gender differences here. And then one question that's of huge concern to our community is whether this has changed over time. Well, looking, there are two surveys that were done a bit over 10 years apart. And it seems as though that lesbian, gay, bisexual identity has not changed at all, or it, a very small, minuscule proportion. Although bisexual identity seems to be a bit more common in young people, um, that's something that's, that's clearer. And, um, and lesbian and gay identity is more common in older people. So, I mean, this could be due to changes over time, possibly, but it could also be that perhaps bisexual identity changes more into lesbian and gay identity as you get older and settle with a partner. So that defines who you are. So I think that we can be, you know, the community can really be reassured that there's not an epidemic going on. So, um, <clears throat> now this is another really important survey that's been done since, uh, since 1992, every five years from La Trobe University, and that's the survey of secondary school students. And the most recent survey um, found that, that most, uh, you know, most are attracted to the, only to the opposite sex. 8% um, of males, 4% of females only attracted to the same sex. But 5% of males, 15% of females attracted to both sexes, and then a smaller proportion unsure. So, I mean, I suppose what I'd just say about this is very few of them identify at this age. So these are year 10, 11 and 12 young people. But very few of them have yet identified and articulated that they're gay, at least in the survey. But their experiences and their attraction seems to reflect the adult population. So it is there when they're younger. What about their identity? So, well, I, I'm really ashamed to say this, but Australia, no one in Australia has even asked the question in any survey, a representative population-based survey, so we don't know. There was a survey, and that's of adults as well as young people. There was a survey in New Zealand. They do surveys of, of adolescent health every few years, maybe every, not few years, maybe every 10 years or so. And um, they asked about this at the most recent survey, and they're going to ask this in the census going forward, which is fantastic. And they found that 1.2% of young people, adolescents school, in schools, identified as transgender. Yes, I am transgender. Um, and 2.5% were unsure about their gender. So it's not insignificant. And we must collect this information. It's really important. So how are these young people doing? Well, I've got some bad news. As you know, there's always bad news about this. So we know that they experience <laughs> bullying and violence in school environments, particularly in the early years of high school. It seems to get better as the years go on. They experience isolation. Often um, they you know, have problems with their family, which can re result in them having to leave their home. And, many, and some of these end up homeless or in unstable living circumstances. They risk dropping out of education. And of course, they tell us that their sex education didn't have any information of relevance to them. And that's still the case. 
and they take drugs with, um, or they may take drugs or at higher risk of, ta of taking alcohol and, um, and drugs and that puts them at other sorts of risks. So it may be that they do that, the drug and alcohol, to deal with some of the mental health issues. But certainly with those range of risk factors, it's not surprising that they do have a higher incidence of mental health issues. So just recently this was published actually, and it's on the Australian Institute of Family Studies website. And this is from the Longitudinal Study of Australian Children, which is a really amazing study, representative longitudinal study, and the oldest so this is from the oldest wave, they're now 14, 15, I mean they're a bit older now but when this data was analysed that's the age that they were and they've been followed up from when they were quite young. But anyway this analysis found that self-harm was twice as likely in same sex attracted, unsure, not attracted to anyone versus those who are only opposite sex attracted. And suicide twice as likely as well and of importance after controlling looking at all other factors it was really one of only three key risk factors for a higher risk of suicide and this is a very comprehensive study the growing up queer study also looked at that and and found very high rates of suicidal ideation um, self-harming attempted suicide and experiencing violence and, and abuse in school and other environments so really important work and other surveys have also found these associations so um, the other I want to mention this access three study so I'm involved in this study and this is looking at barriers to access and young people and we're looking particularly at young people who have vulnerabilities and LGBTQ young people are one of this one of these groups and they do find um, not only do they have higher levels of distress in this survey but they also experience barriers accessing health care and some of these kids need the health care obviously for mental health but for other reasons particularly the gender diverse kids they need to access appropriate health care but they experience discrimination and stigma and um, you know for example only male and female options are available on that new electronic medical record and hospital databases GPs are not really trained in these issues and it's, it's costly and complex for some of these kids who need to see lots of different professionals. So some good news. New South Wales have launched a youth health framework, which is a bit like a policy, but it's called a framework. And it was launched at the recent um, Australian Adolescent Health Conference in Sydney. And the focus is on young people with vulnerabilities. And it has explicitly articulated um, sexuality and gender diverse young people as an area that the government must look at supporting in, with respect to health services. So they're looking at strategies to improve practitioner skills with vulnerable young people, so training, etc. And, and so then also supporting specialised youth health services and linking them all together. They're looking at promoting health literacy online. So you know, so that young people can know how to learn how to navigate the health system and get their questions answered from a reputable source. So these are some of the things that are happening. So, and this is just a, um, a slide to show the goals of this new health, New South Wales health framework. So I'll just finish there. Thanks. Thank you.